In 1938, the standard tanks of the Italian army were the L3 series light tanks, which, during the Spanish Civil War, did not give a positive impression to Italian officers because they were inferior to the Republican Army armored vehicles of Soviet origin, such as the BT-5 fast tanks, the T-26 tank, and the BA-6 heavy armored car. On the basis of Spanish experience, the high command of the Royal Italian Army issued several requests to some Italian auto companies to develop more advanced vehicles able to fight with the most modern foreign tanks. Hence, the L640 was designed by Fiat and Ansalto to fight on the narrow and steep Italian mountain roads, but was used by the Italian Army mainly in Russia and North Africa. After the Allied landings in Sicily in July 1943, in the September 1943 Cassipile Armistice, which led to the surrender of the Royal Italian Army, some L640s were captured by the Wehrmacht, which reused them in second-line units for anti-partisan duties in Italy and the Balkans. Hello and welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Tony, and today I'll be covering the Samovente L40 da 47-32 in Italian service, if you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or Paypal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tank Encyclopedia content. Any help would be greatly appreciated. The first design of a self-propelled gun armed with a 47mm gun on the L6 hull resulted in only one mock-up and consisted of the hull of an L640 without the turret. Above the superstructure was mounted a 47mm cannon with a gun shield in the middle to protect the gun servants from enemy light weapons fire. The project was also not accepted by the Italian army because of the height. In late 1940, Ansalto was requested to modify the project while maintaining the chassis and the cannon. Development began in January 1941, and on May 10, 1941, the prototype of L4047-32 self-propelled gun was presented at the Centro Studi della Motorizzazione Militare, Center for Military Motorization Studies. The cannon was inside a casemate, so the vehicle was much lower than the first L6-47-32 mock-up. It had an armored roof with two hatches. This prototype was very much appreciated by the high command of the Royal Italian Army, which considered it suitable for the task of infantry support and, secondly, for the role of tank hunter. During the test in late 1940, it was evident that the limited space hindered the task of the three members of the crew, so it was ordered to remove the roof of the vehicle, decreasing the protection of the crew, but increasing the available space. The vehicle was accepted in service with the name Semovente Leggero Modelo 1940 da 47-32, self-propelled gun on hull, lightweight model 1940, armed with 47-32 or, more simply, Samovente L40-47-32. The crew of the self-propelled gun was composed, as on other Italian self-propelled guns, of three men. One of the most serious problems of the self-propelled vehicle was the little space inside the vehicle that, among other things, forced the loader to expose himself to load the cannon. During battles, when the vehicle was within range of the enemy infantry's weapons, the loader, in order to avoid exposing himself to enemy fire, could only give the gunner the ammunition, forcing the gunner to load the cannon. This significantly reduced the rate of fire and distracted the gunner or vehicle commander's attention from the situation and whereabouts of the enemy forces seen through the gun's optics. As on other Italian self-propelled guns, during skirmishes, especially at short distances, crews wore infantry steel helmets instead of tanker-padded helmets to protect themselves from enemy fire and grenade splinters. The engine of the Semovente L40-47-32 was the same as on the light tank L6-40 tank, the Fiat SPA 18T gasoline four-cylinders inline liquid-cooled engine with a power of 68 horsepower, some sources claim 70 horsepower, at 2500 rpm. It had a volume of 4053 cc. The 165-liter tanks guaranteed a range of 200 km on road and about 5 hours off road, with a top speed on road of 42 km per hour and 20 to 25 km per hour on rough terrain, depending on the terrain on which the self-propelled gun was operating. The L6 and L40 were the first Royal Army vehicles equipped with the torsion bars. The tracks were derived from those of the L3 series light tanks and were composed of 88 track links on each side. 
The armor was the same as on the L640. The front plates of the superstructure were 30mm thick, while those of the gun shield and driver's port were 40mm thick. The armor of the L40s often cracked after being hit, but not penetrated, by enemy shells. Even small caliber ones such as the Orton's QF 2-pounder 40mm rounds. The armor plates were all bolted, a solution that made the vehicle dangerous because in some cases, when a shell hit the armor, the bolts flew out at very high speed, potentially seriously injuring the crew members. The bolts were, however, the best that the Italian industry could offer in 1941, and they had the advantage of keeping the vehicle simpler to manufacture than a vehicle with welded armor and it had the possibility of replacing damaged armor plate with a new one very quickly even in poorly equipped field workshops. The primary armament of the Semovente L40 da 47-32 was the Canone da 47-32 mod 1935, nicknamed by the soldiers Elefantino, Little Elephant in English. This gun was designed by the Austrian Böhler company and over 3200 units were produced under license by various companies of the Royal Army from 1937 until 1945. The main producers were Breda, Arsenale Regio Esercito di Torino or ARET, Arsenale Regio Esercito di Piacenza, AREP, and Ansalto. Designed as an infantry support cannon, it proved to be reliable and precise during the Spanish Civil War and capable of taking out the few opposing armored vehicles. Its maximum range was 7,000 meter, but it was effective up to 4,000 meter for infantry support and about 1,000 meter for anti-tank fire. The gun was mounted on the left side of the hull, in a support that allowed a horizontal traverse of 27 degree and a vertical traverse from minus 12 degree to plus 20 degree. The cannon had a rate of fire of about 15 rounds per minute on the L40 due to the cramped available space but when the vehicle was under enemy infantry fire, the loader could not perform this function safely and therefore could only pass the ammunition to the gunner and this sensibly lowered the rate of fire. The ammunition consisted of 70 rounds, and the cannon could fire 5 types of ammunition, high explosive, armor piercing tracer, armored piercing composite rigid tracer, and 2 types of high explosive anti-tank rounds. Precise values on the penetration of the Mod 35 armored piercing ammunition are not available. However, an Italian document of the Spanish Civil War era states that it penetrated 37mm at a distance of 700 meters. The Mod 39 armor piercing ammunition could penetrate plates with thicknesses of 55mm at 100m, 40mm at 500m, and 30mm at 1000m, angled at 0 degree. There is no precise data on the penetration of the heat ammunition of the 47mm gun, but an Italian report from some test in October 1942 shows that the Effetto Pronto round was not able to penetrate the 52mm thick side armor of the turret of a T-34-76 model 1942 captured by the Italian on the Eastern Front. The Effetto Pronto Speciale round, produced in very few numbers between early 1943 and the end of the war, had greater anti-tank capabilities and was able to penetrate the front armor of an M4 Sherman. Production of the Semovente began at the end of 1941. But the first Semofente da 47-32 was completed in early 1942. 340 L40s were produced in the standard version, 320 delivered to Reggio Esercito units, and another 47 in command and radio station versions, for a total of 387 vehicles between January 1942 and September 1943. These light self-propelled guns were not suitable for use on the snow-covered ground and muddy roads of the Eastern Front because of their narrow tracks. The 47mm cannon was not able to cope with the most modern Soviet tanks, such as the T-34-76 and the KV-1s, but could effectively knock out pre-war or light vehicles such as the PT-series tanks, T-60s and T-70s often used to support Soviet infantry assaults. In North Africa, the L-40 self-propelled guns were used during the Tunisian campaign by the 1st and 136th Battaglioni Controcaro and in units of the 132nd Armored Division Ariete and the 133rd Division Litorio. In late 1942, the British sank dozens of merchant ships and shot down hundreds of Italian and German transport planes. This meant that the Deutsche Afrika Corps and the Royal Italian Army could not replace their losses. 
In February 1943, General Giovanni Messe took command of the First Army in Tunisia and reorganized the armored unit under his command into two divisions. The Semovente L40-47-32 were the most numerous Italian tracked vehicles present in the Tunisian campaign and participated in few numbers in all battles until March 10, 1943. During the Battle of Kasserine Pass, these fast self-propelled guns were fundamental to launching the decisive counterattack that, on February 20th, made the inexperienced American units retreat, succeeding at the cost of huge losses to knock out some M4 Sherman tanks at a very short distance. The Italo-German forces under the command of General Erwin Rommel managed to capture more than 30 M3 half-tracks, cannons, and also some M4 Sherman medium tanks while destroying more than 40 enemy tanks. The last known action of the self-propelled gun units was during the Battle of Medinin on March 6, 1943, when a platoon of L-40s of the 20th Italian Army Corps launched an assault on the British forces with disastrous result. In a single day, the units under Rommel's command lost about 50 Italian and German tanks. After the Second World War, an unknown number of Semovente L-40 47-32s were put into service with the State Police Corps of the nascent Italian Republic founded on June 10, 1946. Being a police corps of a state no longer at war, Semovente were used only as deterrent in demonstrations, elections, or political rallies, leaving the barracks only a few times throughout the late 40s. During the first years of the Italian Republic, the Italian government and the USA feared that the former partisans and factory workers could attempt a communist coup d'etat supported by Yugoslavia and the Soviet Union. For this reason, the police and the Arma dei Carabinieri, arms of carabiniers, were equipped with light armored vehicles and armored cars that were rarely used. Unfortunately, today, there are only two 47-32 L-40 self-propelled guns remaining. One is at the U.S. Army Ordnance Training and Heritage Center, Fort Lee, in the U.S. state of Virginia. This vehicle was probably captured in Sicily and taken by ship to the United States. It seems in good condition, even if a good part of the interior has been removed. Between 2018 and 2019, it was restored externally and also repainted in khaki color, similar to the original Italian camouflage. Before that, the vehicle was at the United States Army Ordnance Museum at the Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland before the museum was relocated to Fort Lee. There, the vehicle had been left in a poor state and had previously been painted white. The second L-40 is located in Corsica where, after the war, it was demilitarized by removing the cannon and ammunition racks and used by the forest guards of the island for an unspecified period of time and then abandoned to rust in a warehouse. In recent years, it has been restored and is now on display in Zonza in Corsica. This self-propelled gun armed with a 47mm cannon proved ineffective against the most modern British, American and Soviet tanks when it appeared on the battlefield in late 1942. Developed primarily for providing close support to Italian army assault units, the L-40 was very effective in the infantry support role, where it could hit targets up to 4000 meter with efficient accuracy. Its weaknesses were the absence of secondary armament and radio equipment, feeble protection, and the small and cramped internal space. These problems were mostly resolved by the third series produced for the Germans after November 1943, but due to the vehicle's overall size, little could be done to increase the firepower with a more potent gun. This concludes our video about the Semovente L40-47-32. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscription. You can find more information relating to these vehicles in the full article which is linked in the description. If you like what we are doing and want to let us continue working on these videos, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be allocated to improving our articles and videos for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.